Hello and welcome to this tutorial for the game Cleopatra and the Society of Architects. This is the deluxe edition that was released in 2020, but the original game was made a long time ago. I don't know if there's anything different in how you play it, but I'll be explaining this 2020 version to you. It's quite an easy game. Here's how it goes. You are going to keep playing until someone places this figure on space 5. This is Cleopatra. When a player places her here on number 5, every other player gets one last turn and then the game is over. Whoever has the most scarabs wins the game. So again, the game will be almost over when this figure is put on the 5 and if you have the most scarabs, you are the winner. Next, how do you play the game? What do you do when it's your turn? When it's your turn, you first choose if you want to do anything with these guys here. And then, you can either Take new cards, or discard cards to build something. That's it. When it's your turn, you take cards, or you spend cards to build something. I'll explain these guys later. First I'll tell you how you take cards. You can see there are three columns of cards. The game calls this the market. You can take all the cards of one column and then place a new card on each space. Take them from the deck and place them exactly as they are. If the card is face down, don't flip it up. One card here, here and here. And that's it. The only thing you have to do at the end of your turn is check how many cards you have. If you have more than 10 cards, you either have to discard until you have 10 cards left, or for every card that you have over 10, you have to take one of these coins and put them in your pyramid. For example, if you have 13 cards and you don't want to discard any, you have to take three coins. Next, building. When it's your turn you can either take cards or spend cards to build one or more things. As I said, it's not the most complicated game. Look at this helpful sheet that you can keep with you. It shows you exactly what you have to pay and what you get for that. Let's go through them one by one. This top one says, if you discard one worker and two materials that are the same, you can place a sphinx. And that will give you three scarabs plus one extra scarab for each sphinx that is already there in the same row. Let me do this one as an example. In my hand I have this one worker. All the workers look like this. So I discard that one. And I have two cards that show wood on them. So I discard those as well. I put it all on the discard pile and I take one of the sphinxes. I place it here in this row where there already is one other sphinx. And then I can take three scarabs plus one extra for this sphinx in the same row. Make sure that you keep every scarab that you take face down. The other players can't know how many you have. One last detail. You also have these red cards. This one is also wood, but it counts as two wood. So instead of paying two cards with one wood, you could also discard this one with two wood. But whenever I use one of these red cards to build something, 
I have to take one of these coins and put them in my pyramid. And these coins will not be good for you at the end of the game. I'll explain that later. But that was an example of how you build. Let's get back to the list. Second one. For two workers and three of the same materials, you can build a piece of one of the doors. So maybe two workers and three wood. That will give you five scarabs plus one scarab for each piece of wall that is linked to the door. If there would be three pieces of wall on this side and I put the door here, that would be three extra scarabs. Number three on the list. Pay three workers and four materials that are the same. So, four wood, for example. Then you can place an obelisk. That will get you ten scarabs plus two extra scarabs for each sphinx in the row next to it. Number four. Pay one worker and two materials that are not the same. For example, that could be one wood and one stone. It's up to you, as long as they're different. Then you can build one piece of wall. That will give you three scarabs plus one extra scarab for each tile square that touches here on top of the palace garden. These are the tiles. Each single square counts as one extra scarab if the wall touches it. Number five. I'm going to skip this one for now and explain number six first. This last one says pay three workers and four materials that are different. So, one wood, one stone, one marble and one of these blue crystals. Four different ones to build a piece of the throne. The first time you do this you have to place the pedestal and the second time you do this you can place the throne. You can place them here in the back of the garden. Then you get ten scarabs plus two extra scarabs for each square of the garden tile the throne is connected to. I know the rule book says you get one extra bonus scarab for each tile, but this helpful sheet says two, and usually mistakes in the rule book are corrected on these sheets. I've e emailed the publisher, but no response so far, so I say you get two bonus scarabs for these tiles. Now, back to number five on this list, building garden tiles. You have to pay two workers and three materials that are not the same. Then you can take the piece that is on top of the stack and place it somewhere in the garden. Then you get five scarabs. And then you can choose which extra bonus you want. You can either take one extra scarab for each palm tree that you placed it on top of. Or you can choose to place one of your own statues in the garden. But there are rules for that. Let me explain. You can only place one of your statues if you have cut off a space in the garden that can never be covered by tiles later in the game. For example, if I take this piece and I place it here, then I've created this space here. Since all the garden tiles uh, are quite big, they could never be placed here. Because then I would either have to hang it over the side of the wall or place it on top of another piece. And those are two things you're not allowed to do. So, this space can't be covered by tiles ever again. And that allows me to place one of my statues in that space.
I leave it there for the rest of the game. No other players can place a statue there. But what do you do that for? You remember that sometimes you have to take these coins. And these coins are bad to have at the end of the game. When the game is over and you do the final scoring, you can place one of your coins on each space in the garden where you have a statue. So I could place mine here. And then I have less of these bad coins. One last thing about building garden tiles. After you have placed one of these pieces, you have to do a check. Take the top piece from the stack and see if it's possible to place in the garden. If it is, put it back and you're done. But if that piece can't fit anywhere, you have to discard it from the game. Then you check the next piece if that would fit and do the same. Keep going until there's a piece on top that does fit or until you have discarded every single piece from the game. In that case, this garden section is finished. But that's all you can do when you choose to build. Let me quickly repeat that. When it's your turn, you can take cards or you spend cards to build one or more of these things. This is the price, this is what you can build, and this is your reward. When you want to, during your turn, you can build multiple things. Whenever a certain section of the palace is finished, you move Cleopatra forward one space. For example, if you have placed both of the obelisks, that section is done. There are only two obelisks to build, so it's finished. Then you move Cleopatra forward. When Cleopatra steps onto five, every other player gets one more turn and then the game is over. Two last things to explain what you can do during your turn. As I said in the beginning, you can first choose if you want to use any of these guys. They will give you something special during your turn, but there is a price, of course. If you want to take this one, you have to pay three scarabs. If you want to take this one, you have to take one of the bad coins and put it into your pyramid. These ones cost you two coins. And for this one, you have to take three bad coins. When you've had your fine, you can take the person you want to use and do your turn. At the end of your turn, you slide every person one space to the left and you place the one you used all the way at the back. I can explain all of these to you because it's very easy. You take this one, you get two discount in materials for everything you build this turn. If you take this one, you get two discount for every workers you need to build this turn. If you take this one, you get four extra scarabs when you build something this turn. This one lets you take four cards from the deck before you do anything. And this one says that during your turn you can take cards and build something. So you can do two things instead of one. And the last thing to explain is this. If you look at Cleopatra you can see there is a line between space 3 and space 4. If you move her figure from 3 to 4, the game stops for a moment and all the players have to do something. What that is, you can look up in the rulebook. It's easy, but I don't want to overload you with too much information. And it will be a while before you reach this point in the game. 
So all there's left is scoring at the end of the game. The game is over. What happens now? Step 1. Discard all your cards. For every red card that you discard, you have to take a coin. Step 2. Lift up your pyramid and see how many bad coins you have. Step 3. If you have a statue in the garden, now is the time to place your coins on each space there. Step 4. All the players count how many of the bad coins they have. The player that has the least coins can discard all of them. And then all the other players can discard that many coins. For example, player 2 has only 3 bad coins. And that is the lowest number of all players. So player 2 discards those 3 coins. And then every other player can also discard 3 coins as well. Step 5. For every bad coin that you still have left after all of this, you have to pay scarabs. The rulebook shows you the list. If you have one bad coin left, you have to pay this, and so on. And after all of this has done, whoever has the most scarabs left is the winner. When the game is over, just take out the rulebook and follow these steps. We're done! This is how you play Cleopatra and the Society of Architects. I hope you feel you understand how it goes and that you'll enjoy it. Thank you for watching this tutorial and see you for the next one.